all ready here for another amazing Q&A session. So, as usual, um, I'm going to ask Ashima uh, my uh, icebreaker question. And the icebreaker question is, is there anything interesting in your surroundings, an item, or maybe something else that you want to share about you? Mm, I think maybe I would like to share this. Uh, this is like my workout mat, but it's made of wood like straws so it's an insulator you could work out on like a really cold floor and it would still remain warm and it would remain cool on a warm floor so it's like a great way to work out in places which have like huge temperature fluctuations so yeah. nice nice i also saw it was like nicely decorated as well <laughs> colorful and everything yeah cool yeah, I um I think I, I, don't, I it's sometime I don't see them around here where I live. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it would be nice to find a shop where I can find them. Maybe Amazon has them. We'll see. We'll see. We'll put a we'll put a link. John. Yeah, I could. Uh, I was just thinking I could do one of those myself for a bit of yoga in the morning <laughs> when the floor floor is cold. Uh, Chris, have you got any curios you'd like to share with us? Yeah, um, I've got a bunch of crystals on my desk. So I recently, if you listen to the podcast I did, I, um, I mentioned that I've gotten into rock hounding um, as a result of my child. And I, I like, I am, I, I don't know. I've, I've never been like that into, I mean, obviously crystals are cool, but when you find your own crystals in nature, it's just this surreal experience. Like, wow, I dug that out of the ground. I mean, look at this like perfectly shaped, you know, thing. It's just, so yeah, my, my room is quickly, I've, I've organized this, the cameras so that you can't see too much of the mess, but there's like rocks everywhere in the rest of my room right now, outside of the con cone of, uh, you know, observability here. Um, Excellent stuff. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. How would you suggest I choose between Oz, viz.clj, Hanami, or other option for data visualization? I guess uh, the answer which I gave was basically uh, Hanami would give you like the most amount of customization possible. And like, if you want to go in depth, then that is definitely the option to choose. But if you are just starting out and you have never done any data visualization in Clojure, I would recommend starting off with this. And like I said, we have these options to substitute, like create Hanami substitutions. So that will help you slowly, like gradually learn Hanami as well, along with using this. So this would sort of fulfill your initial uh, requirement of creating small charts. And then you are slowly learning Hanami in the process. Other than that, we also have a tech quiz, which has like certain, you know, specialized plots. If you have those needs, like, uh, for example, colorful histogram or something. So you can check that out. And uh, if you uh, don't want to use any browser uh, options, then I think CLJ plot would be the one to go, which is uh, being, uh, which is right now in uh, progress and uh, Tomash is sort of building it. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Can I add a couple of points to that? Of course. Yeah, great. Um, sure. So yeah, that's, um, yeah, that, that, I think that sounds great. Uh, as far as Oz is concerned, um, this is something new. So we did a workshop uh, on this just earlier this week. And I think there's kind of a challenge with Oz in that it has evolved into kind of a, um, a Swiss army knife. Um, it's got a lot of different tools or it's got a lot of different things that it can do. And so I think a lot of people aren't necessarily even aware of everything that, um, that it has available. Um, it is, um, you know, it's a set of reagent components which um, have now been made more flexible as far as how you get data in and out. So you have access to the view, the Vega View API for um, for inserting or changing data sets. Um, it's also um, we've been working on similar things to NoteSpace and Clerk um, with our um, with our uh, namespace as a notebook functionality. Um, and um, yeah, and so just released uh, version 2.0 uh, earlier this week, which has um, which has some really cool stuff to uh, to check out. We're actually evaluating forms in parallel now, not just um, not just doing the dependency graph and then, you know, 
computing one after the other, but actually when we when we see the two forms are independent, we can compute those in, compute those um, in parallel now. Um, there's, uh, yeah, and I th I'd say the other thing that really stands out with Oz is that um, for a long time now, it's been designed with the goal of being able to produce static documentation uh, or scientific documentation. So um, PDF output is on the horizon, um, been, been kind of designing around that for a while right now and getting, getting close to putting that in place. Um, but also if you want to build a static website, like a blog or just produce kind of a data science report, um, you can use kind of the notebook functionality of Oz and then spit out a static HTML document that looks really nice. Um, so I think, I mean, but just to kind of cap all of that off with, Oz, you know, that's Oz specifically, right? I mean, it's, it's a Swiss army knife. Use it for what kind of makes sense for you. I feel like it's a good first tool to grab if you think you might want to be doing a bunch of these things, because then you have everything there. Um, but the, the, the other thing I'll say is just that um, it's really fantastic that as a community, we've, I, I mentioned this in the talk, have converged towards Vega and Vega Lite as, um, as uh, data visualization languages, because it means that we've got a lot of op interoperability, right? You're not locked into any one of these things um, as long as they're all kind of using these, um, uh, this underlying language. So for example, you could take Konami's um, um, uh, templating mechanisms um, for, you know, more concisely describing data visualizations, and you could use them with Oz, um, or, or as you mentioned, you could use them with Viz uh, CLJ. Um, so there's, um, yeah, there, there's, there's, the, the answer is use everything. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Ashima, it was also suggested that you publish the docs on cljdoc.org, and you mentioned that, you tell me. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, I was not aware of that library, so uh, I'll definitely check it out. And uh, if it suits our needs, then I would definitely use it. All right, thank you. John, um, any more questions? Uh, yeah, I've got a few questions for Chris. Um, actually, while you were talking about Oz, I'm just curious, um, does Oz uh, implement the complete Vega Lite specification? And is it just Vega Lite or is it Vega as well? What, what's the kind of situation yeah, there? Yeah, so it's just wrapping um, Vega and Vega Lite. It's effectively wrapping the, um, the well, it's kind of doing two, again, it's complicated to describe what a Swiss Army knife is doing because sometimes it's doing different things. but. The standard sort of usage where you're at a REPL or a closure process and want to visualize some data kind of interactively, that opens up a web browser and you can you know, interact with a, a Vega or Vega Lite visualization there. So it's just using the embed API to um, embed in a page. Um, but if you're building statically compiled output, if you're building a web page, if you're uh, again, hopefully in the future here pretty soon, you're building a PDF, um, you're, it's going to use one of two mechanisms to try to statically compile an image. Um, and incidentally, you can just use Oz to statically compile an image just kind of by itself outside of the context of scientific documents. So that's what you want. Um, that, that is something it can do. Um, but um, to do that static compilation, um, uh, I, I'm, let's see who worked on it. I want to say Jack Rusher and the, what is it? The, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting, it was, I'm forgetting the name of the organization that did this work, but um, Dark Star was the name of the project that um, was using- Light Science? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, uh, this using Graal to compile um, Vega and or Vega Lite, I guess, um, so that uh, actually from within the JVM now, using Graal to interpret or whatever, compile the, um, uh, the JavaScript in the Vega libraries, um, it's able to now compute at least the SVG. I think that the if, you're, if you want PNG, um, which sometimes is better if you have bigger data because you don't want to mm -hmm. have an SVG with too many nodes, um, that could be a little bit problematic, but um, I think there you might still have to use the um, install the NPM Vega CLI to get it to work, but um, which which is the other mode. So um, Oz will Oz will use um, will use the 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 NPM um, Vega CLI as a, as a fallback. Um, but if for if if you want SVG output, it will call out to the Dark Star library to um, to produce that. Dark Star. That always reminds me of the movie. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie, then it's worthwhile watching that. I think uh, it's yeah, classic. I don't know if I have. Now I'm... It's a classic old one. Uh, yeah, yeah. One, of the, one of the early sci fi movies out there. Uh, of the yes. <laughs> nice. 
Um, cool. And, and so are, are there any good tutorials uh, to help people get into using Oz if it's if it's such a big Swiss army knife? Or should we look at the uh, should we look at the workshop you did earlier on this week? Yeah, honestly, the workshop, we ended up kind of getting into the weeds a little bit. I, we, I, my goal was to really try to do a lot of demonstrations. Um, and unfortunately, well, unfortunately, not for I mean, whatever it, it, it was, it was actually great. I mean, we had, people ended up being a little bit more interesting and in asking questions about how things worked and kind of future direction stuff. So not necessarily, but um, I do want to put out soon a better, um, just full kind of video that um, that outlines and details all the things you could, or actually maybe a bunch of separate videos that show the different features. Um, one that kind of gives you an overview and, and some that, um, that go into the details. Okay, that sounds cool. Yeah, if you, if you want any help with that, I'd be happy to get involved with that as oh, well. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Cool. All right, great. I'm, I'm kind of curious if we like switch back to um, Polis a little bit. I know I don't really want to kind of uh, um, air your dirty laundry, but I'm kind of curious in the like the original tech stack and, and perhaps how you want to evolve that and some specific like parts of this awesome potential of cl closure data science that you want to unleash in this project as well. What, what kind of th thoughts do you have on that? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the biggest things that I really want to do um, with the code base is, and this is kind, this is kind of funny, but um, at some point we kind of re-implemented the code base using not re-implemented, but we um, we set up um, Sierra's component library for you know dependency injection lifecycle management, um, which seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, I mean, it's kind of what everyone was using and, you know, we wanted to be able to kind of start and stop the system work cleanly. Um, and I mean, you know, it certainly it solved that part of the problem, but it came with the cost of just making the code base a lot harder to work with, which I think, especially from a data science perspective is, um, is, is very problematic because I think that, you know, when you're, when you're designing software, to be software when you're doing software engineering, you can kind of tolerate a little bit more of um, cantankerousness, let's, let's, shall we say, in exchange for kind of a cleaner system design where, you know, you can have a test environment running at the same time as your development environment. I mean, the, the, you know, component can do a lot of stuff, right? Um, but I've recently come to the conclusion that, you know, for the kind of interactivity that you want with the data science project, um, in order to kind of dig into a namespace and start evaluating stuff, having to muck around with finding the right component from the system thing at, and then, you know, sticking that into the right function call every time. It's just really kind of annoying. And um, so I'm thinking that um, I, it would be great to re-implement and either um, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in considering integrant, but I, I think probably um, Mount is kind of the, um, seems like the simplest um, or maybe it's easiest, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but it seems like a very straightforward solution that kind of solves the problem of making things more usable um, uh, uh, from the developer perspective. Um, there is also, um, yeah, the, the other big thing, and this is a major thing, again, um, I touched on this briefly, but um, we implemented um, in the using core.matrix, which at the time seemed like a great idea because Core.matrix has this really modular design where it's built on, uh, against protocols. So you can actually implement um, the core.matrix uh, core API using whatever kind of underlying data type. So um, that felt like a really powerful um, feature initially. But um, since then, and you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not someone who's, you know, deep in the kind of performance and, you know, numerical computing side of things. That's not necessarily my bag. Um, I'm, you know, more, more experienced with like the algorithms and the, you know, the analysis side of things, not necessarily the nitty gritty of how they get done. Um, but, um, I, you know, I, I, I recognize that a lot of the closure community has moved more towards, um, towards the tech ML stack. And that really buys us a lot in terms of, um, it, it solves some very real kind of pressing problems with, um, with performance, I think. Um, and also, again, gives us the opportunity to interface more with, um, uh, with, with Python, with R, um, with the rest of the kind of, um, uh, um, you know, um, data science sphere in other, in other ecosystems. Um, so that's, that's, that's a transition that, um, that we'd like to make. Um, so th those are the two biggest 
things that come to mind right now. I'm kind of going through a very long old issue queue. And um, uh, if you go back to the talk, the, the link that I shared to the um, uh, to our repo, you can go find the the um, the the, the GitHub project on that page. And um, that's where I'm starting to break things down a little bit. You can search by math or closure to find um, closure related issues uh, and, um, and things are sort of, there's a priority column there. So you can take a look at that to see what's, um, what's, what's pressing in our mind. Excellent, thank you. Yeah. Okay, we have um, another uh, question for Shima. I think she's answering straight away in the channel, but like we'll get her um live here so um since uh viz doesn't have the swiss army knight dimension does it have a notion of when it will be done in other words where will we uh, uh be going and what do you do what do you want to do with it next so uh i think it will still be like in the alpha stage for at least a few more months uh, usually we decide our directions based on the feedback that we get from users. Like that was our process we decided to follow when we started building it and it has worked very well for us so far. So we would like to continue with that. Just, uh, you know, showing it in the study sessions and uh, watching how people react to it. That would probably be the main deciding factor. There are a few more things which uh, we would like to explore, uh, like some specific use cases such as, you know, I mentioned like the time series data visualization or something like that. So maybe we'll uh, also look into that. So, yeah. All right. Fantastic. So um, let me thanks again, Ashima for uh, her awesome talk there her effort and uh, Chris as well again for his talk and being with us today answering all these questions it is amazing uh, thank you very much